thanks again for joining me here at butnowministry.org and today we're going to talk about how grace kills sin being crucified with Christ right how did Christ kill our sin good question right well the answer is the cross the word crucified is found in your Bible 37 times 23 times in the Old Testament before the cross three times in Acts while Peter's preaching the murder indictment and and by the way he wasn't preaching the good news of the cross okay and 11 times in the revelation of the mystery which is where Paul preaches the good news okay of the cross and how we are dead and how we are to kill our sin, right? The biblical definition is, in the Old Testament concerning Christ on the cross, it was prophesied for Israel. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And again, this is what the cross of Christ does for Israel, okay? Psalm 22, 16, for dogs have compassed me, and it was you know, prophesied since the world began. It was spoken by the prophets since the world began. That's what, pro that's what, clearly that's prophecy in your Bible. It was always spoken by the prophets since the world began. Now the mystery was kept secret since the world began and it was unsearchable, Paul tells us. It was the unsearchable riches of Christ. So you're not going to find it in prophecy. You're not going to find the mystery. You're not going to find what Paul tells us about Christ in prophecy. It's, it's unsearchable, okay? Psalm twenty-two, sixteen: 16, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and feet. Zechariah twelve ten: And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. John 6.40. And by the way, who's the firstborn? That would be Israel. Exodus 4.22 says, God's firstborn son is Israel. John 6.40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. John 6, 44, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. John 6, 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And by the way, that's the Roman Catholic doctrine of the Mass right there. They take eating the flesh and drinking the blood literally so they have eternal life. They don't trust in the death, burial, and resurrection for eternal life. They trust in the Old Testament doctrine for Israel of John. Okay. Christ was bruised. Christ was given stripes, which, was, which is being whipped. Christ was pierced and raised up. Okay. So what were these bruises? Genesis 3.15 and I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Isaiah 53.10 Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. How about the stripes? Deuteronomy 24 or 25.3 Forty stripes he may give him, and not exceed, lest if he should exceed, and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Psalm 89.32 Then will I visit their tr transgression with the rod, and their iniquity with stripes. Proverbs 19.29 Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. Proverbs 20:30 The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil so do stripes the inward parts of the belly Isaiah 53:5 But he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed Luke 12:48 
But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. What about being pierced? Psalm 22, 16, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and feet. Zechariah 12.10 And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. John 19.34 But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. So prophecy is confirmed from Zechariah after Christ dies on the cross by John. John 19.34, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And John 19.37, And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. Which is Zechariah 12.10, right? Zechariah 12.10, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. John 19.37, They shall look on him whom they pierced. Hmm. Remember, prophecy for Israel, most of the verses that are talked about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were already prophesied in because they're all Old Testament before the cross. So you can look back and find the prophets prophesying what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John confirm. Okay, John also confirms in the New Testament who will be looking at Christ's piercing in Revelation 1-7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So it's amazing how when the Bible says that the prophets spoke of prophecy since the world began and those things are searchable. And then Paul says his mystery was not spoken since the world began. It was kept secret and his writings are unsearchable. Okay, you can't find them in the Old Testament. You can't find them in the New Testament. You can only find them in the Revelation of the Mystery. You can only find it in the Acts period when Israel's transitioning, when Israel's falling and we are transitioning into grace. We go in from law to grace in the Acts period. So it's amazing when you are dispensational and you rightly divide, you understand progressive revelation, you're mid-Acts, you're Pauline, and you believe your Bible, that you have your King James Bible, you see how all this comes to play. If you, if you took out Paul's writings, which is about 100 pages in your Bible, ripped them out, you would have all prophecy for Israel. You would have the Old and New Testament. That's all you would have. You would not have the revelation of the mystery. And maybe that would make things easier for you to read. And like most, if you remove the book of Acts, then Israel would never fall, and you would think you're building a kingdom today for the Lord. The Strong's definition of crucified. <clears throat> to impale. To fasten. Okay, how about the Webster's 1828 definition? To nail to a cross, to put to death by nailing the hands and feet to a cross or gibbet, sometimes anciently by fastening a criminal to a tree with cords. And then he gives Luke 23, but they cried, crucify him, crucify him. In scriptural language, to subdue, to mortify, to destroy the power of ruling influence of. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Galatians chapter 5. And like I said, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary is one that you definitely have to have in your Bible because it gives, he gives Bible verses and he also, it's a dictionary that is before all the corrupt translations came out. 
to reject and despise. They crucify themselves, the Son of God afresh, Hebrews 6. To be crucified with Christ is to become dead to the law and to sin and to have indwelling corruption subdued, Galatians 2, 6. So imagine having a dictionary with Bible verses in it today. That's like a dream, you know. What does our Apostle Paul tell us about crucify according to the revelation of the mystery? Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Galatians 6, or Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Romans 6, 8, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Notice, we are dead with Christ. It is not I that live, but Christ liveth in me. Christ has killed our old man. Now the body of sin might be destroyed that we should not serve sin. Hey, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that we should not serve sin. Galatians 5.24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So have you crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts? Because we are not to confess our sin like Israel. We are to stop sinning, period. That we should not serve sin. But no, I know. 1 John 1, 1.9 says that you're, you're to confess your sin, right? Well, who is John writing to? Who is John a minister of? Galatians 2.9 tells us he's a minister to the circumcision. That would be Israel. So let's look at confessing for Israel, okay? So when it came to faults and sin, Israel was commanded under the covenant to confess. Remember, the body of Christ is not under any covenant, and since the body is present today, there is no Israel, okay? And that's on the authority of Romans 9, 10, and 11. Romans 11, 11 says, Because there's no Israel... Because Israel has fallen, we have salvation today. If there is an Israel today of the Bible, okay, like everyone thinks, you know, then we're not saved. Old Testament Israel, Leviticus 5 5, and it shall be when ye shall be guilty in one of these things that ye, he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing. Leviticus 16.21, And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Leviticus 26.40, If they shall confess their iniquity, the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. Numbers 5, 7. Notice we are in the Old Testament for Israel. Who got the Old Testament? Did the church, the body of Christ, get the Old Testament? No. The Old Testament was only given to the children of Israel. Did the children of Israel, or did the church, the body of Christ, get the New Testament? No. It was only given to Israel. Okay. Exodus 19 confirms that. Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36, and Hebrews 8 confirms that too. The church, the body of Christ, is never given the Old or New Testament, only Israel. Okay. Numbers 5, 7, Then they shall confess their sin which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it a fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. 1 Kings 8.33, When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. 1 Kings 8.35, When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou affistest them. 
Second Chronicles 6.24, And if thy people Israel put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house. That's the, almost the same verse as 1 Kings 8.33. 2 Chronicles 6.26, When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain, and this is the same verse as 1 Kings 8.35, Because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them. Nehemiah 1.6 Let thy ear now be attentive, and thy eyes open, and thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. Psalm 32.5 I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid, I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. And how about the New Testament for Israel? James and 1 John. James 5.16. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Notice the words, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So clearly Israel has to confess to get forgiveness of sins. Israel has to confess so that they may be healed. Clearly, most of the verses that I just went through talk about the children of Israel, never the church, the body of Christ. What does the word confess say in the Pauline epistles? Notice it never tells us to confess our sins, even in the transition books of even in the transition book of Acts from Law to Grace. Acts twenty three eight. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Acts twenty four fourteen. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Notice, not any confession of sin. Romans 14, 11, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Romans 15, 9, And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And Philippians 2, 11, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So notice, Paul never tells you to confess your sin. Not even from it. Through Acts and through Paul's writings. So, Clearly, Israel had to confess their sin for their sin to be forgiven and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. So as we continue our study on how grace kills our sin, and as we learn how to walk in newness of life, stay tuned for part two. Thanks again for listening. Email me at reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com. Subscribe to my channel and check out my website at buttnowministry.wix.com slash buttnowministry. Thanks again.